Hey everybody, we're back with another edition of Wine 3 Online. Today talking about the homework having to do with calculation of SO2 additions. So let's get right to it. You remember this slide from the lecture on wine additions. This gives all the steps here for uh, the um, calculation of SO2 additions. So we will go through these steps here when we do to, in order to do the homework problems. So let's get right into problem number one. So one was if the pH of a wine is 3.4, how many parts per million free SO2 is needed to provide 0.5 parts per million molecular SO2? So let's go through the steps. So we first want to determine the level of molecular SO2 needed. In this case, that's given in the problem, right? It says we need 0.5 parts per million. So we determined that, you know, normally we would uh, decide what organisms we want to uh, protect against, and we would select the level of molecular SO2 on that basis. And remember 0.5, that gives us protection against bacteria. And if we wanted to go higher and get protection against yeast, we'd go to 0.8 parts per per million of molecular SO2, and that gets us some more protection against yeast. So in this case, it looks like we're worried about bacteria, so the level of molecular SO2 needed is 0.5 parts per million. Okay, so that's that's step one. Step two then would be to test the pH. In that case, that this is also given in the problem as 3.4. So we can go right on to step three, determine the target level of free SO2. So to do that, we want to pull up that chart from VinCury. So here's that chart. And I, I like the chart, but it's a little confusing to some people. If you remember on the left here, this is the chart we used in class. It has the pH in the first column right there. And then over here is the real relevant data, right? This is where for 0.8 molecular, you'd have this column here. That's the total free SO2 needed to give 0.8 parts per million molecular. If we wanted only 0.5 parts per million, that's the second column here. Now, the data in the middle here, I'd kind of like to get rid of just because it can be a little confusing. What it does is it just gives the percentage of each of the three species at each of those pHs. So it gives the percentage of molecular SO2, then the percentage of, bi of bisulfite, then the percentage of sulfite. We don't really need that for doing step three. So I cut the chart down to just four columns here on the right. So we just have the pH, and then we have the amount of, of, of parts per million of free SO2 needed to give us 0.8 molecular, 0.5 molecular, or 0.3 molecular. So step uh, column two there, 0.8 molecular, column three, 0.5 molecular, column four, 0.3 molecular. So in our problem, we want 0.5 molecular, right? So we'd be looking at this column, column three on the revised chart. We know the pH is 3.4, right? So we're looking at this row here. So for 0.5 parts, uh, to give 0.5 parts molecular at pH 3.4, answer is we need 20 parts per million free. And that's all there is to question one. It really was just an exercise in using the chart. So if it helps you to simplify the chart and just use this four column chart, please do so. You can ignore those three columns over here that I crossed out. Okay. Hopefully that's clear, let's go on to problem two. So problem two, you currently have 10 parts per million free SO2 and 30 parts per million total. So 20 parts per million, of course, is bound. But you want 25 parts per million free. You can assume that one third of any new SO2 added will become bound. How many parts per million total do you need to add to get to your, to your target of 25 parts per million free? Okay. So let's do the steps. So step one, the level of molecular SO2 needed. Well, in this case, 
this would be determining do we need 0.8 or 0.5. For purposes of problem two in the homework, we don't really care because what we're given is we're given the answer to step three, which is the target level of free SO2. And that target is given in the problem as 25 parts per million. All right. So we don't really need to answer item one. Normally, we only answer item one in order to be able to get item three. And item three is given for us. So we can kind of jump right there. Uh, we don't even need to worry about pH in this case because, uh, because again, we just needed that in order to determine and solve and answer step three. Okay, so now we test is this existing free and bound SO2. Well, that's already been done for us in the problem too. We know that existing free is 10. Free normally has two E's. Free is 10, bound is 20, and total equals 30. Okay, so, but we know that our target is 25 parts per million, right? So this is, this first column is current. Our target is 25, so we need to add 15 parts per million free. Right? Okay, so far so good. So. The question then becomes, we have to go on to step five. We need the, well, we did step five. The additional free SO2 needed is 15 parts per million. So now the question becomes, how much total SO2 do we add such that we end up with 15 parts per million free? And for that, we have to do step six, right? So we have to estimate the percent free in any addition. And we're going to say, um, according, to our, according to the problem up above, if you assume one-third of any new SO2 adder will become bound, that means two-thirds will remain free. So in other words, if we're going to have some addition in parts per million, if we take that addition and we multiply it by two-thirds, which of course is 0.66, then that will equal 15 parts per million. In other words, our total addition, two-thirds of that is going to be free. So our total addition times 0.66 equals 15 parts per million. So then, I didn't leave myself enough room, but let me go back up here to the top. If we just rearrange that formula then, we have 15 parts per million divided by 0 0.66, just doing the algebra, equals our addition amount. Right? So if we divide 15 by 0 0.66, we end up with approximately 22, let's see, I think it ends up to be about 22.5, something like that. All right, so that's close enough. So our total addition would be 22.5. And that's what we'd add. So we add 25 parts per million, step seven. And we know that if we can check our, 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 our work by just saying we know two thirds of that addition will become free. Two thirds of 22.5 is 15. And that's exactly what we need to add. So the 15 that we add plus the 10 that we had to start with gives us our target of 25 parts per million. All right. Hopefully I didn't confuse you with by running all over the page here. Um, but that's our estimate. And then, of course, the next day we would do step eight which is to test the free and abound SO2. And just to make sure that our assumption about the amount of free, that assumption of the two thirds will be free, that our assumption's right. Okay, that's, I, that's number three. 
Number two, rather, let's go to number three. Um, you have a white wine, which you want to protect from microbial spoilage. You do a ripper and find seven parts per million free and 25 total. You use the pH meter and find the pH is 3.2. How many parts per million total SO2 will you add to provide protection from microbial spoilage? All right, so let's go through the steps. First, step one, determine the level of molecular SO2 needed. So, we want to protect from microbial spoilage, but it doesn't tell us if we want to protect from yeast or bacteria. So you have to make an assumption. So you're either going to take a number from column one, uh, two of our chart or column three of our chart, right? So two or three, depending on whether you want protection against yeast, which would be this column, the 0.8 molecular, or bacteria, which is this column, the 0.5 molecular. Okay, so let's just say, let's just assume we want bacterial protection. That'll be consistent with our earlier problem, our problem one. And let's say we want 0 0.5 parts per million molecular SO2. All right, that's number one. Next, we test pH. Well, that's given in the problem 3.2. So we're good to go. So then we can determine the target level of free SO2. So go to our chart. There's 3.2. We'll look in column three, because that's our protection at 0.5 molecular, and we need 13 parts per million total free SO2. Well, we, we already had done a ripper, and we'd found that seven parts per million was free, right? So, so now we have seven parts per million. We need... 13 parts per million. So we need to add six parts per million free. So again, then we'll, well, let's just go on. Um, so, so we test that we already tested addition free and bound, right? We've done our ripper. So the additional SO2 needed is our six parts per million. Oops, six ppm. And the percent free in addition. So let's estimate that 66% will be free or two thirds. All right, just like earlier. And then we'd have to calculate our total to add. And again, it would just be the addition times 0.66, right? Our fraction that will become free equals the free that we need six parts per million. So if we take 6 ppm, dividing both sides of, of this equation by 0.66, we have 6 ppm. Well, here, let me just do it this way. Make it, very, make it hopefully a little more clear. Dividing both, both halves of this equation by 0.66, we end up with our addition equals 6 ppm divided by 0 0.66, and that equals 9 ppm. All right, so our total addition is 9 ppm. All right, and that'll give us protection from microbial spoilage. And again, the next day, we'd go back and we test it and make sure that we ended up at or near our target of 13 parts per million free. Okay, hopefully that helps. Thanks for hanging in, you guys. See you in the next class. Bye.